TV show, past or present, best represents you and why? Ooh, a solid question. And you know what? I'm going to give you a non-answer answer. answer. <gasps> <laughs> I'm still going to answer. So okay. I, don't really, I don't really watch a lot of TV now. And I feel like YouTube is really the content platform of the future and the now. And so instead, I'm going to give a content creator that I love on YouTube. So okay. the, yeah, the creator that I love, her name is Tiffany Ferguson. Her channel is Tiffany Ferg. And uh, she creates this series called Internet Analysis. <laughs> it, it analyzes memes. It analyzes uh, the role of wealth in lifestyle content. It analyzes things like the rise of fashion commentary channels online, things like that. And I, I think that represents me pretty well because it's still really fun, hopefully interesting, but probably there's a little bit of overthinking in it too. <laughs> <laughs> well done. Well done. All right. I dig that. I dig that. All right. Kimberly. Okay, well, um, I didn't even consider YouTube, but I should have because we're on a podcast on YouTube. But I picked my favorite show, which is Buffy the Vampire Slayer. And I feel that it represents me because I tend to live on the misfit edge and I have a compulsive need to save the day. <laughs> nice. Nice. How about you? So I selected the outer limits <laughs> because I feel also like my life is a lot of weird little strange little vignettes, you know, mm. strung together like an anthology. <laughs> and, uh, you know, I also, you know, I, you know, there's a lot of conspiracy theory, aliens and stuff like that, you know, which I don't believe Mostly. most of the time. <laughs> <laughs> Occasionally though, I'm like, hmm. hmm. Next to think. You go, hmm. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and to our listeners, welcome to the Kimberly and Coach Show, where we bring you actionable practices you can use in your leadership and collaboration. Today, I'm Coach Kimberly is right next to me. Today with us is Olivia Ledbetter, a content strategist over at a little shop that you might have heard of called <laughs> Oracle. Yay! Just a little, Yay! little, little shop. <laughs> Small. <laughs> <laughs> Olivia, thanks so much for hanging out with us today. Yes, I'm so excited to spend some time with y'all. Can you tell us a little bit about your work at Oracle? Yes, I absolutely can. So I am part of a strategic messaging services team at Oracle. And so that is made up of myself on the experience team side of that, which includes art directors. It includes another writer now. And we have some UX developer folks in Romania, our offshore team as well. Cool. And the it is cool. The other half of the team is made up of strategists. So it's a lot of people who have been uh, either on the sales side or have been doing the demo side themselves and now are coming alongside with the experience team to help create better experiences for customers. Well, that sounds so good. It's so good. It does mean that my role as a content strategist is going to look very different from someone's role who might be more on a marketing team because I sit in pre-sales. So I am doing content strategy for potential customers. I'm trying to storytell to a specific potential customer why their business and their future would be better with Oracle. So it's, it's very customer centric. It's very specific. I'm always learning new things and it's, it's really fun. Nice. And I think earlier you said it's also kind of top secret. <laughs> Yes, it you're is. Like, so, like the, uh, <laughs> like the Tom Cruise of the content strategy world. I mean, basic. That's what they like call mission, it. Mission Impossible Tom Cruise. Yes, not like mission Scientology. Impossible. Yes, Mission Tom Impossible. Cruise. <laughs> yeah, Cruise. please. Let's not be Scientology Tom Cruise. <laughs> yes, actually. So that's the life of pre-sales. So I, I can't share any work until deals have closed at least. It's pretty confidential. So our competitors can't steal things from us and us from them. But that kind of keeps you on your toes. <laughs> Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, right on. So Kimberly says that you run or you help run some team meetings for some kind of function at Oracle. I didn't catch all the details, actually. So tell us about how you're leading there without the term leader in mm. your job title. 
because okay. you know, we all know that you have to have leader or CIO or CEO in your job title to lead, right? Yeah, Truly. Said again. nobody ever. <laughs> well, nobody here anyway. Nobody here anyway. <laughs> no, no. Okay. Ooh, I, I want to take that two ways. So f- one thing that I want to talk about is what I think you just mentioned about being a leader versus just <laughs> leading. And so I I think that's the difference. I I don't have a leadership title, but I do try to be pretty proactive. And I'm lucky everyone on my team tries to be pretty proactive in Mm. leaning into the things they're really good at and listening when someone else is leading. Oh, I love that. Doing it. Yeah. It's it's a really healthy culture. Mm. Um, And that actually, coach, part of your question, is part of what I'm leading. So Currently, I am leading a culture council within my team, and the reason we have this now is that we just hired a bunch more people, which is always a good sign when your team is expanding really fast, but it can mean that you have to be pretty delicate with how you're onboarding that many people to a pretty Mm. high visibility, high intensity team. And yeah, we have been known for having really good culture up until this point, and so we didn't want to lose it right at the point of expansion. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> yeah, but come here, it's great. Well, actually. Uh... You know, I think that's actually a very common problem that when a company experiences huge growth, that usually means you're really, really busy. And so some of the intentional culture building can get pushed to the edge and then you don't really notice it until it's like, oh, and now we have to fix something. Oh my goodness. I could not agree more. Yeah. <laughs> So we're trying not to do that. And so that's the function of this culture team, which is myself and a group of six other individuals. And we have a sister team, the connections team. And the difference between those teams, connections is more about fun interactions, making sure people are talking and getting to knowing each other. And the culture team, I like the structure. The culture team is more long-term focused. And so things that I care about and the team cares about are how do we make sure that every person is performing to the best of their abilities and feels empowered to keep learning. Mm. How do we make this a safe culture for feedback? How do we challenge our assumptions of who we are and how are we even talking about who we are within our company? Because for an internal content role, it really matters that our internal stakeholders see us as being in a position of authority and want to work with us because if they don't bring us their deals, we can't work on them. (laughs) Yeah, that makes sense. <laughs> that's true. That makes a lot of sense. <laughs> it do, yeah. So that, and that's been part of what I've been working on lately. And then I also make sure um, we have biweekly calls with our team. And so I try to create a balance of fun, but intentionality. I hate funditories. I never want to have mandatory fun. <laughs> We're all having fun same, now. Same, same. Funditory. This is the first time I've heard this term and I like it, <laughs> but I should never use it. But yes. it's, it's a good description of some <laughs> trying to create genuine connection, uh, which is really out of a philosophy that it's not just connection for connection's sake, even though everybody I work with is amazing. And I would love to do that anyway. It's out of the idea that if you're doing creative work, it needs to feel safe. You need to have people to fall back on because you're not going to put your crazy idea out there and try something new if you don't trust the people and know the people that you're working with. That is so true. That's so good. That's so good. Would you be able to share one of the things that you've done to try to create space for trust? And it's not super top secret. Well, obviously <laughs> not the top secret stuff, but the culture stuff. <laughs> I would love to hear one of the ways that you've tried to tackle that. Absolutely. So um, one of the, the biggest things that we've done, and I think the most helpful things Uh, Our team does a lot of storytelling externally. So maybe we'll do a a manifesto style emotional video for a potential customer. Okay. Well, we've never done that internally. And so a couple of years ago, we ended up developing and creating a strategic messaging services team manifesto. And it's all about not what we do, but who we are and who we hope to be as well. And, um, part of that, that I was most excited about is that we went through and every line on that manifesto represented 
a person or people on the team. And so when we presented the manifesto to them, we had a video we played, they all got their own copy to keep at their desk because almost all of our team is remote, even pre COVID, <laughs> we were almost all remote. So it's a physical reminder of who the team is. And then they also got a letter saying, hey, such and such, here's your line, here's how it embodies you, and here's how you personally make us better on the team. Oh, I love that. I love that so much. Go Oracle. Huh, that's <laughs> cool. All right. So, so let's shift gears a little bit now, and let's talk a little bit more about this whole content strategy, content mm -hmm. creation. What role does a con this content strategy and creation play in leading leading your audience? Such an important role. So you can tell people things all day long. They might be listening. They're probably not listening. <laughs> when you're doing whole content. Word. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So true. Mm. When you're doing content strategy and when you're, you're trying to do good content strategy, instead of telling people who you are and why they should listen to you, you're setting a vision for who they could be. And so you're making people lean in. Uh, yes, it might still be informational. You might still be sharing. You're probably still sharing what you sell and what you offer and how those things connect, but it should really be visionary. And how that then ends up leading people is that they want you to be on their team. They're, they're no longer just buying something from you or learning something from you that you're inviting them to come here, we can help you get where you want to be. And we've even set a vision that might be above what you've even set for yourself. And here's how you're going to get there. Wow. Yeah. I like that a lot. That's super cool. <laughs> I, you know, I, I love the invitation part that you bring out there because yeah. that's, that's, that's really cool. All right. So let's, uh, let's talk about this. So every day we're consuming content, right? Yes streaming radio tv social media <laughs> you know it's like uh, we're inundated constantly yeah yeah and so i think people forget you know that there's actually real people that have an agenda you know yes. that are creating this content how do we how can we know that that agenda is for our good and not leading us down the path towards the dark side of the force per se, <laughs> you know, because all of a sudden, you know, you put in the right content, right messaging, and all of a sudden we're building a death star. Right. So, and no, we don't need any more of those. We do not need any more death stars. So, <laughs> but I think it's true. If content is leading you somewhere, like yeah. what you're talking about, you're, it is inviting you somewhere. How do you know that you want to go? What are your thoughts on that? Mm, oh, I have a lot of thoughts on this. Ooh, I bet. <laughs> Uh, well, first off, as a consumer, unfortunately, you don't. You don't know. Uh, and that's kind of part of the challenge. <laughs> and so when you're consuming content in your personal life or your professional life, I think always having a layer of skepticism to it is not mm. cynical and is not unhealthy. It protects you and it makes sure that you're not going too far down a path before fact checking, before making sure that it's from an ethical source, before making sure it's in line with your worldview. I think that's very healthy and very normal. Mm -hmm. um, when well, at least it should be normal. It should be. <laughs> Let's <Yeah>. normalize it. <laughs> yeah, it's hard right to now, do. It's now normal. <laughs> it's hard to do. And I don't always do it. I mean, I it's easy to mindlessly consume content. I will say I am most skeptical of content that hides its agenda. <laughs> so content that sells something to you or is educating you it's a little easier to know the path that it's leading you towards. Cause usually it's telling you, here's the path. Isn't it great? Come <laughs> along with me. Please come down this path. Yes, <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Down the old brick road, rainbows and unicorns and everything. The place to be more cautious is when you're engaging with content that thinks it doesn't have an agenda because mm. most things have an agenda or is bearing the agenda that it has. So um, even things online, like lifestyle influencers, um, an unboxing video, things like yeah, that, yeah. I'm much more skeptical of because what is the worldview that's underneath that, that makes them want to make that content. And what are the mm. believed truths about the world that they probably want you to buy into, or think you already buy into from watching that. Um, 
it doesn't mean it's bad. I watch a lot of that kind of content. It can be really relaxing and nice as a consumer, but I do think that we have to ask ourselves, what is this piece of content asking from me? Even if it seems like it's not asking anything. Right on, right on. I dig that. Yeah. And I, I think that the way that people are sharing their content sometimes hides an agenda, like which words are they using? You know, oh, um, yeah. I think an example would be in, in media, when there is a crime committed by a black person versus by a white person, there's maybe different word choice in the headlines and there's an agenda under that. Mm -hmm. And it's worth paying attention to that. You know, and so I think sometimes you have to kind of take a step back and look at like, why are they choosing these words to share this information? And they're oh, not yeah. going to be as upfront about that kind mm. of an agenda. Mm. You no, know? no, but that's a fabulous point. Even analyzing what's the subject of the sentence in a headline yeah. that you're reading. Yes. Oh my gosh. Oh, you just, you just touch my English teacher nerdy heart. <laughs> <laughs> it's important. It's so it important is. because- those are things that you can consume without realizing you're consuming them and can be really harmful or could be really helpful if you're consuming really good quality content. Yeah, so true. True, true. So we're going to go ahead and bring this on in for a landing. This has been awesome, by the way. Some yeah. great thoughts. I think you're, I think our, our folks listening to, to our conversation are going to, going to totally groove on this. Um, but before we go, uh, how can people uh, contact you or uh, find out more about uh, the work that you do? Yeah. Oh my goodness. Yes. So I'm on LinkedIn. Like everybody else, I'm Olivia Ledbetter on LinkedIn. And you can also find me at olivialedbetter.com. Oh, very nice. Very easy. So, so easy. Cool. Yeah. All right. Well, Olivia, thank you so much for hanging out with us. This has been awesome and super fun and super good. So uh, to you, our dear listener, thank you for tuning in to the Kimberly Coach Show, where we endorse getting out of your dreams and into your car, <laughs> driving towards the beautiful quantum potential of your life. We'll see you next time. <laughs> Cheers. So we just finished our interview with Olivia Ledbetter, mm -hmm. who does content strategy for Oracle. And there were so many good things that we could pick as the practice of value. A ton of good things in there. We had to have a little pause and say like, which practice of which value of should we pick out for this uh, mm -hmm. epilogue? But I want to talk about um, looking at sharing content as leadership mm. in the sense that you are trying to take someone somewhere. Okay. Whenever yeah. you're sharing content. Right. Mm -hmm. And so if we think about that as leadership, first of all, that is a practice. That is to, a practice. To hold yeah. it with a responsibility. Like I'm leading someone somewhere. I loved how she talked about um, the invitation part of it. Right. And to oh, say, like, good. we want to be on their team versus like, please buy our product. Um, but please to kind of thing. center the person who's going to have an experience with what you're what you're sharing via your content. I thought that was really brilliant. Yeah. Yeah. What do you think? Um, I also think that was brilliant. I think <laughs> this whole idea of inviting people in versus like commanding people in. <laughs> <laughs> buy my product. Yeah, buy it now. Buy it now. <laughs> you know, um, sham wow, sham wow, whatever, you know, uh, the weird stuff that we see uh, on late night uh, infomercials. Uh, I think it is an interesting They have an agenda. They do have an agenda. <laughs> it's yeah. not a mysterious one, though. <laughs> no, it's not. It's like buy our things. Yeah. But I think inviting people and helping them understand where you're going, you know, assuming that you actually have their best interests at heart and understanding your own agenda as mm -hmm. you're communicating those things too. A little bit of self-awareness goes a long way when you're yeah. communicating. Um, yeah, we were kind of talking about it from the angle of, how do we think about the content we're consuming? Is this, what is the agenda here? And is it taking us to the good side or the dark side? Or you the know, death star. The death star. <laughs> but I think the, the practice that goes along with it is when we are creating content, rather than mindlessly creating content to, to self-observe, what is the agenda that I'm bringing into the content that I'm sharing? And is it a force for good? Mm. you know yeah. and of course what we think is a force for good might vary <laughs> but 
we can at least at le- as leaders think through, okay, I'm sharing this, but why am I sharing this? What am I trying to get people to see or value or experience or think like, what, where am I trying to lead someone to with this content? Even if it's like, I'm sharing a funny meme, sometimes, sometimes those are funny because they're going to a good direction. And sometimes they're funny because they're not, you know? Yeah. <laughs> Sometimes they're uh, an important morality tale all in one little picture. So it's true. It's true. One other thing I did, I did, I did want to pull out there as far as a practice of value. I really like their manifesto idea. Oh yes. That's Let's so talk fun. about that. You know, I think uh, I've been it's a part, bonus practice. Yeah. It's a, a total, total bonus and total, total good one. Um, I think that it, it takes a lot of effort, a lot of time to do that kind of stuff. Mm-hmm. And it shows a, a very defined interest and effort to in to invest in the vision for for the team. Yep. Which is why a lot of people don't do it. How many times? <laughs> so we've both been working for decades, at least two decades. Decades. <laughs> so how many times have you had? someone in your company write you a letter about what you bring to the team. Does performance reviews account? No, no performance review does not count. What? Tell him no. No, it doesn't count. Okay, it doesn't count. <laughs> maybe, maybe once, but it was right before I got fired, so it really didn't matter. <laughs> what? <laughs> a whole different podcast. Yeah, I know, right? So yeah, it was, uh, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it was a little close. The answer postcard. I was looking for was zero, zero okay. times. So for me, it's zero times. Well, I kind of, yeah. <laughs> and I just think yeah. that is a very unique practice to, to take the time to do that manifesto and then to send it with a letter. Like this line is about what you bring to the team. I just thought like, wow, that's so cool. Yeah. And like, hell yeah, I'd put that on my desk. <laughs> I'd right? be like, yes, this is how I'm appreciated. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Yeah, I think that's I think it's huge. I think it it takes it takes time and resource, you know, to do that kind of thing and actual insight and care, which yeah. again is why people don't usually do this kind of thing. But I think yeah, if if a shop can muster up that level of care, yeah. you know, and bring that in and with with authenticity, mm-hmm. you know, versus yeah. like has to be a real yeah a real observation versus that like has a, value. You know, a fundatory <laughs> kind of perspective, <laughs> which is. Another word I'm going to use forever now. Forever. Thank you, Olivia. Um, <laughs> I mean, really, it's a great word. Like, I mean, certainly it, I've had a lot of my bosses come up and say something to me like, hey, I really appreciated this today or right. I really appreciate mm-hmm. that you bring this to the team. Um, but the degree to which they are doing it on their team is just something that you can you can bring with you, which is pretty cool, I think. Um, a lot of times when a boss is telling me a nice thing, this is maybe just about me. Um, <laughs> but I am kind of like in that moment wondering what is coming next. Like, is there oh. a shoe that's going to drop, <laughs> which is definitely a thing about me, but also probably not one. I'm probably not alone in that. Mm. Like I'm waiting for the mm. kick. Um, but also I'm like managing my face. Like what's the appropriate response to this nice thing that you're saying? Like it can be kind of an awkward moment. Bring the awkward. <laughs> but if you have it in a letter, you get to like process it when you're not on the stage with the person, you know, and, and you get to mm. like the idea that you could keep it on your desk yeah. and have a sense of like, this is how I fit in the team. This is why I'm important in the team. It just seems so brilliant to me. Yeah, so well done, cool. Oracle. Well done, team. <laughs> so that's it for this episode. Once again, my friends, thank you for hanging out with us and, and tuning into our conversation. And we'll see you next time. Cheers. Again. Again.